What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here. I'm sorry if you're gonna hear an echo. Um, I'm currently in my grandparents' gym um, because we are watching the NBA dunk contest. The skills competition is tonight. Um, and the Leafs decided to make a trade. So there, there were some rumors um, on Hockey Night in Canada during the 32 Thoughts segment um, about the Leafs potentially making a trade with the Arizona Coyotes because they have you know, the cap space available and they've got some rentals. Um, so Labushkin was the guy that was in question. Uh, Sportsnet wrote an article about possibly him being an option and I never made a video on it. My friend DTSB did and I was like, you know, I wasn't sure if he was gonna be an option uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but he actually is. So the full trade um, is the Leafs acquiring Ryan Dezingle, a forward, um, and defenseman Ilya Labushkin from Arizona. Uh, in exchange for forward Nick Ritchie. Uh, of course, his cap hit going the other way. And a choice of their third round pick uh, in 2023 or the second rounder selection in 2025. Now, um, right, right now, Dezingle, uh, he's 29 years old. He's played in 26 games for Arizona this year, um, registering four goals and three assists. So this is a depth player. Um, so I'm not too sure what the Leafs plan are with him, but I'll give you guys some cap numbers in a second so we can see kind of what the Leafs idea might be. Um, Labushkin is 27 years old. He's appeared at 46 games for Arizona um, this year. He's got uh, nine assists. Now, the thing about Labushkin is he's not gonna be a guy that's, you know, I think there's a lot of people online can saying like he's a top four guy and this, that, and the other. He's a depth defenseman. He's gonna be a guy to play probably on the bottom pairing um, potentially maybe getting some top four minutes, but I doubt that he will be a long-term um, solution as a top four guy. Uh, this is a really good way for the Leafs to acquire depth on both the forward um, and defense position. Now, here's the thing. Earl Schwartz is a really good follow on Twitter. Um, he does a lot of stuff with the cap, and I'll be making I'll be make another video on this, um, looking more in depth and seeing if the Leafs potentially could do more because there is a chance they could. Um, because Ryan Dezingle makes $1.1 million. His full salary can be buried in the minors, but he would have to clear waivers. Now, I'm not sure if the Leafs are interested in doing that, um, but if not, the Leafs uh, need to send somebody down. So it's more than likely going to be Timothy Lilligren that gets sent down, but the other option is that the Toronto Maple Leafs could send down a guy like Pierre Engvall, or there could be another trade coming because you don't want Lilligren in the minors. There's been rumors that maybe Travis Dermott could be a trade option, um, but regardless, the Leafs could potentially um, make some, some decent moves going forward if they feel like they uh, don't need the cap space, uh, or sorry, if they don't need um, a guy like Dermott for the depth, maybe your depth is Lilligren and Labushkin, and then you can move out Dermott's $1.5 million or 1.2, I can't remember what he makes. Um, Potentially, the Leafs could have about $1.2 million in cap space if they were to put Lilligren on the taxi squad um, and have Pierre Engvall um, on the taxi squad as well because then he'd be making $125,000 against the cap and the Leafs would have $1.2 million in space and then they would just put Dezingle on the third line. I'm not sure if that's what they're going to do or maybe there's another trade coming in terms of that. Um, but I think the Leafs want to have more forward depth, so I'm not too sure what's going to happen there. Maybe there's more um, that's you know up in the air as we go forward here. Um, so I, I'm not too sure what else is going to be going on here. I, I kind of want to take a look at Chris Johnston's Twitter or Elliot Friedman, um, because th this is basically just me making a video on the fly and I don't have um, my necessary um, tools to make the video. Uh, there was no salary retained. Uh, he's tweeting on um, both the Coyotes and Leafs side. So right there you can see this is just a straight up trade, money in, money out. But the biggest thing here too is that the Leafs are not paying that $2.5 million to Nick Ritchie next season. So that's money that they can use on somebody else. So there's still potential that the Leafs could add if they don't feel like they want to use um, a guy like Dezingle or a Pierre Engvall or something like that. They, they have options um, and they still can accrue cap space towards the deadline. Uh, and of course, with salary retention with other teams, they can make something happen. They keep their first round pick. You know, you don't have to give up a first 
like I said, to get a guy like Ben Chirot. The Leafs are getting a better quality defenseman while also getting rid of Nick Ritchie's contract and only giving up a second or a third uh, round pick because there's going to be a choice, I believe, for Arizona to choose one of the picks. So definitely a good trade by Kyle Dubas. More coming on this. Maybe I'll make a video uh, tomorrow to go more in depth, but a great trade for the Leafs in my opinion. If you are new here, check out my other videos. This isn't my usual setup. Um, like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, big trade. The Leafs getting Ilya Labushkin uh, and uh, oh my god. I can't believe I'm already forgetting. Ryan Dezingle, ridiculous. I remember, I liked him when he played in Ottawa, so definitely a decent depth pickup. Um, but I'm not too focused, as you can tell, on the forward side of things. I was tweeting out during the Leafs' loss tonight that they needed to address, needed to address that blue line, uh, and Labushkin gives them some depth. So let me know what you guys think about the trade. Uh, this is a great trade. Um, I think that it just does a lot of things at once. So thank you guys for watching. Peace.